This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Another doubleheader for Monday Night Football for this weekend. We got the Bucks taking on the Eagles and the Bengals hosting the Los Angeles Rams. And plenty to talk about in both those games. We're going to dissect each game, break down traditional markets, player props, and much more by talking to Ryan Williams. This is this is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and on FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here as I am each Monday. Monday by Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, another doubleheader coming up for tonight. How you doing today? Oh, I'm doing just fine, Jim. Uh, yeah, we get doubleheader of action of football. Uh, trying to uh, see see if these games are going to uh, live up to expectation as we had seen some, some heavy favorites uh, lose on Sunday, yeah. uh, which is not great for the survivor pools, but uh, you know. <laughs> That, that's just how the cookie crumbles sometimes week three was was so exciting so much fun I, I loved it just from the standpoint of you know things uh, coming to fruition uh, mm -hmm. when people think they know all the answers mm -hmm. uh, you know us us included as well too Jim I don't I, I don't uh, remove us from that bucket at all but that that's what makes it fun is when you start to see the season play out and we talked about it it's only two weeks um, we still have a lot of, of runway and uh, when you see things like the Cowboys losing to the Cardinals, uh, the Ravens losing to Minshew Magic um, and, and other things that were just absolutely wild for a Sunday slate, it, it makes it fun. Yeah, I made my first mistake of the year, Ryan, because my model did show value on the Cardinals money line and I took only the spread, did not take the money line as well. And Usually what I'll do is I'll like, you know, ladder it where it's like, OK, if they cover, I profit. Then if they win, it's it's even bigger, you know, bigger yeah. output. I just went straight spread. I was like 12 and a half is a lot at home. I guess whatever I'll do this. But I feel really gross about it. Like I felt guilty betting that yeah. and I didn't do it. So um, I deserve to be put in time out for a solid five minutes. Um, five minutes, I think, is appropriate. Yeah. But um, yeah, first mistake uh, officially made where I missed out on what could have been a nice. They were plus five twenty on Tuesday. Um, they yeah, kind of right. shit. I think they got to like plus five seventy at one point. The Cowboys are minus eight hundred at some point during the week. So missed opportunity to be sure. Yeah, those are always fun things to have actions action on, especially when you're already you know kind of going one way against the spread. Even if you mm -hmm. feel like it, it's it's not going to come to fruition, just to take that shot. Yeah. Um, when the Bucks are giving you, you know, higher than five to one, you know, on something happening, especially with the Cardinals being at home. Yeah. And then we got the Trayvon Diggs news and not to right. say that Trayvon Diggs is worth 13 points by any means. But, you know, this Cardinals team had been showing us that they had at least been playing with life. Yeah. And, you know, if things break their way, as they were able to do on Sunday, you know, a lot can happen with that. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that that's tough. The, the Cowboys are are, are looking looking in the their selves in the mirror this week to try and write the ship for week four. Yeah. And they were getting hype as being the best team in football. I mean, I think I, my power rankings happen yeah. there entering the week. So uh, that discussion likely pretty short lived. We're going to dive into these two Monday night games here in just one second to get you ready to talk in player props and traditional markets. But first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast. We were here every weekday talking about uh, the NFL, getting ready for that plus college football. And of course, primetime Tom with you every Wednesday to get you set for a Thursday night night football this one is the alliance and the packers coming up this week to get all these shows as they are posted make sure you are subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts you can also find us on the fanduel youtube page and on fanduel tv plus to get fanduel tv plus go to fanduel.com watch or download fanduel tv plus on amazon fire apple tv or roku 
Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There is a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel.com and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL, must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Iowa, Colorado, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. Visit 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. Call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800 327 50 50 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts, or call 1 877 8 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y in New York. Let's dig in now to the first game of the doubleheader for tonight, which is the Eagles at the Buccaneers. Right now, Eagles are four and a half point favorites. Total is 45 for this game. Now, this spread is tightened by a point since we were talking about things back on Tuesday, Ryan. So let's start off with the traditional markets. What's your read on Eagles at Bucks there? Yeah. <clears throat> so the traditional market, uh, you know, where the spread is coming in, let's just talk about that. For, first off with the Eagles, four and a half point favorites here. I get it traveling to Tampa and, you know, talk about a team that's that's been hyped. And I was here last week, Jim, talking about, you know, this Tampa Bay team. Um, <clears throat> NFC North might be the worst division in football. Um, not even sugarcoating that, like not even being facetious, like they just might be the worst division in football. And that's where the Tampa Bay's two wins uh, come against. And so you're looking at a Jalen Hurts led offense. Uh, they're getting James Bradbury back on defense uh, and they could really get exposed here on, on, you know, a somewhat island game uh, here at Monday Night Football. I love getting the Eagles here at four and a half. I think that feels appropriate. The 230 is just kind of a little hefty, as we talked about, um, just with the way. Things can go, but even when you're looking at the minus 230, I mean, like Jalen Hurts in his last 22 games is 21 and 1 uh, straight up uh, as a winner, you know, and, you know, covering as well. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the league, and you can tell by, you know, the record and how they've been doing uh, since the 2022 season campaign where he should have won MVP. Um, I digress, Jim. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is just setting up for the Eagles uh, to to kind of take care of business here. Um, it is kind of interesting on the other side if you feel like uh, Rashad can't get going um, to get that over at 45, just because we know Baker Mayfield, like if this team's struggling, like there's only one option and that's him going into D gap mode and throwing it to his guys of uh, Evans and, and Chris Godwin there who've gotten the bulk of work um, in the offense from a receiving standpoint. Um, so I would be interested in the over here from that total um, as we've seen overs kind of trend up since uh, since the week one under uh, onslaught. But uh, really for me in the traditional market, it's looking at Philly, uh, you know, laying those four and a half points there and feeling good about it. Yeah, if I had if I look back to my preseason numbers, I would have had this game as Philadelphia by six point two points. So um, Eagles above this number. But I actually kind of like the Bucks still. I got them at five and a half earlier on this week. I do still show value on plus four and a half. I have uh, right now the Eagles by two point nine, which might seem small, but a lot of it is because. Although the bulk of the model still relies on a prior, and that prior is what had the Eagles favored by 6.2 in this game, there is data from the first two weeks. And the first two weeks, obviously, like you said, are tainted by the fact that they faced a very bad Vikings defense and possibly, sorry, the worst defense in football with the Chicago Bears. So that's that's a rough situation, and obviously you want to account for that. But like seeing... Baker Mayfield be efficient when he has Mike Evans and Chris Godwin to me is not entirely surprising. So I'm going to buy into it in the model, at least 
factors it in a little bit. Um, it's not a, a huge portion of it just yet, but it does show value in the Bucks as a result. Now, can we expect Baker Mayfield to maintain efficiency over a full season? We should probably assume no, I think. I think that'd be the the, the fair assumption, but it's not as if this comes totally out of nowhere. Like he has been efficient at some point in his career. Now, an additional year removed from that shoulder injury. So I understand your side of it, Ryan, where it's like, you know, ah, it's only, it's only four and a half stuff like that. But I think I might be, might be buying a tiny, tiny, tiny bit in the Baker magic. Do I expect them to win tonight? No. Do I sell the Eagles favored? Yes. But I, I'm at least color me intrigued, Ryan, about the Baker Mayfield experience in Tampa Bay. Oh, for the, for the gym. I mean, this is one that would do for for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, you know, as we're they're looking to separate themselves in their own division there in the NFC South. So, uh, yeah, I can't I can't blame you for wanting to get some action there uh, on Baker. And these, you know, these these are the type of games maybe that we see Baker come out in and get a little magic of his own going. So. Uh, but yeah, I just love the Eagles here. Love that the defense is getting a little bit more healthy, um, and love to be able to to take advantage of that. So let's talk about the Bucks player props here. Starting on that side, you mentioned Rashad White, uh, pretty good output last week for him, and we've all seen Mike <laughs> Evans and Chris Godwin play pretty well so far. So when you look at the Bucks props, Ryan, where are you seeing value there at FanDuel Sportsbook? Yeah, well, if I think you know the Eagles are going to win this game and in somewhat in handily fashion, I got to look at the receiving props uh, for some of these guys. And with James Bradbury coming back, I am interested in Chris Godwin, um, who you know is kind of building that rapport there. His over at fifty four and a half uh, coming in at minus one thirteen is interesting. The Mike Evans prop is just interesting too, just because that feels so low for Mike Evans at fifty six and a half. You know, he's easily even if he's having a rough day, you know, he can get a deep shot of twenty five or plus from from Baker and, and kind of make make some headway on that. He's actually gone over uh, this number in both games this season thus far. Uh, but those those are the two things uh, that I'm leaning on. I think uh, from, you know, another interesting point is, as we talk about Island games, uh, if we go to any time touchdown score props, uh, not just to score. Or time where he comes in at plus 450. But you know, I love taking tight ends uh, at scoring first touchdowns. And Kate mm -hmm. Otten is 25 to 1 uh, to wow. score that first touchdown. So if this secondary is containing those receivers, uh, you know, Kate Otten might be able to get loose if, uh, mm -hmm. if the Bucks are able to kind of win this coin toss and get off to a hot start. Uh, it's just one of those, you, you kind of look at the rest of the, you know, the groupings there who are down there, you know, Rashad Penny, uh, DeAndre Swift kind of has a string on that backfield. We're looking at the Philadelphia defense. We're looking at Baker who, you know, rarely ever takes the ball for himself unless maybe they end up at the one. Uh, but even then you're only getting, you know, 500 more on, on Baker. Uh, Kate Otten is a, an interesting play there. Yeah, Otten is on the field constantly, which is what you want for this kind of bet. Uh, the Buccaneers, I think at least, are live dogs. Uh, so the fact that they are underdogs in this game might not matter as much for, an, for a, the first touchdown. So I think that's pretty enticing. I also do think the plus 450 for Otten is not that bad, honestly. I think that's uh, a pretty yeah. good number, too. So some potential value there. Like Sean Tucker is a very good running back, but he's clearly the number two behind Rashad White. And Sean Tucker's anytime touchdown odds are shorter or than Kate Otten's. And, and again, that's a, he's a running back. So that makes sense. But like, you know, kind of giving you context to where Kate Otten is in. I, I think that makes a lot of sense. Now, what about the Eagle side of things, Ryan? We saw Deandre Swift go nuts last week, but that was without Kenneth Gainwell Gainwell likely back for this week. So what's your read on the Eagle side of things here? Yeah, I think for the Eagle side, it, it is kind of, kind of tough even with the concentrated offense because you know you kind of loved what you saw from DeAndre Swift getting going but this Tampa Bay defense albeit it's probably not the same of you know two years ago or years past but they still you know are not the easiest to, to run on and, and the numbers are still showing that so you're looking at the wide receivers who are both explosive you know and it's just a matter of like how do how do these guys get going and who who's going to be that player that kind of takes it takes it away and you know I kind of lean AJ Brown just because mm -hmm. we have not seen the AJ Brown game uh as we would uh think of it as of yet you know 67 and a half is where he comes in for his oval 
over total, I do really like that. But when we're looking at the player longest reception as well, too, I think there's some interesting merit in Devonta Smith. Like Devonta Smith always just seems to be able to be that guy to go deep uh, when you're thinking about, you know, 25 yards or more down the field is really where we're thinking about that deep shot. And he's only coming in at 23 and a half. So can he get behind this defense and take a long reception one? Maybe he even houses it um, is, is an interesting number for me. Um, I think the, the lines on these guys feel a little bit appropriate. But again, if we're hitting the over um, in this game at 45, you got to think one of these receivers is carrying that boat for them. So I do like getting action on them. And then when we look at, you know, the anytime touchdown props, I, I got to go to Dallas Goddard. Like I said, I, you know, I definitely like always targeting uh, the the tight ends on somewhat island games. And he's plus 230. You know, he's mm -hmm. even behind Kenneth Gainwell um, this week. And he got the squeaky wool narrative last week of getting more involved after, uh, after the week one fiasco. So uh, if I have to look at anything right there, I think that's interesting. Another one, Jim, which I'm going to mention before we get to the next game. I should have mentioned this, I guess, with the Buccaneers. But Baker Mayfield has not turned the ball over. Uh, yeah. I believe the Buccaneers are the sole team, if I'm not mistaken, to not have a turnover. His interception prop, uh, which, you know, the, the books definitely caught on, right? It's minus 130, which is probably where you would think, uh, even if he had a turnover already, is where the number is coming in at. But without it yet, um, you know, maybe maybe this happens here uh, at, at home for Baker against this stout D. Um, Philadelphia defense also 5-1 to one to, to score a touchdown. I know we kind of talked about that in DFS worlds and, yeah. and how you can get some action. But I did think that was an interesting point to bring up. Yeah, Baker, as you mentioned, minus 130 to throw a pick in this game. And I think that does correlate well with your overall thought of, OK, if we think the Eagles cover, that means it's hero ball Baker towards the end. And Baker, to his credit, I would say, is willing to chuck it in those situations. He doesn't care about the stats too much. He's willing to heave it up there, see what happens, try to make up that gap in a hurry. So it does fit well. So if you're trying to if the listeners are people who want to play a same game parlay again, not typically my style but if you want to do that those are bets that would correlate well uh mayfield throw a pick eagles to cover stuff like that so if you're playing same game parlays make sure you keep in mind the way your bets across the game interact because you do want to make sure they mesh well from one bet to the next let's talk about the second game for tonight ryan that is the rams at the Bengals. right now the Bengals are one and a half point favorites total is 43 and a half and it seems like the entire week they've been playing this thing as if it's half joe burrow half jake browning i think with the move to one and a half that to me signals the odds that burrow suits up are pretty minimal and so if i plug this in with browning starting I'm pretty close to market on these two numbers. So I think that that's kind of my assumption is that they assume it'll be Browning instead of Burrow for tonight. So what's your read on the markets with where things stand right now? We are recording here at 827 a.m. Eastern. Yeah, where are the numbers coming in? Coming in at Jim, you hit it right on the head. That one and a half is not where we think Joe Burrow is going to be at, and they the books have to be safe um, in case he does somehow get ruled in. But you know, we see him riding on the cart with the owner, looking dejected. We hear from Jamar Chase that he wants his quarterback to be healthy down the line, um, and you know they kind of find themselves in an interesting spot because. Jake Browning, you know, for all intents and purposes, I believe this guy only has one career uh, mm -hmm. pass attempt uh, yeah. in the NFL. And so, you know, going against this Rams D, which I, I definitely was one of the ones that talked about it. And listen, I got a future on the Rams winning that NFC West division. And remember, I told you I regretted that. It's not looking too bad and the name on the defense is the, really Aaron Donald is still the only guy that I know but this defense has been playing aggressive and they've definitely been playing up to snuff this is going to be travel tough for them traveling uh west coast to east coast here and we know this Cincinnati Bengals D is going to be ready uh for Matthew Stafford and co but this one just screams stay away uh as it as it is right now I mean somehow if you, you get the one and a half Bengals if you're feeling like man they could just hold pad and get mixing going and not really, really trust the Rams and playing so be it but i just feel like you know with everything that's shaping up this feels like he's not going to play um and in that instance i have to lean under here of the 43 and a half total right under that 44 uh you know key number there but it, it just screams uh undervalue and i don't see the rams coming out here and you know kind of trying to boat race the Bengals if they have that lead i imagine they'll stay pat and 
kind of lean on the run game to kind of take it home for him. I very much agree. I have, if I put Burrow is out for this game, I have the total at 40.85. Uh, so still good value on the under, despite the fact it has moved down. I have the Bengals by 0.62 with Browning in there. Basically a toss up. I feel like that might be a bit light as far as the Rams side of things. Like, like if I think about Matthew Stafford playing like he has the first two weeks taking on Jake Browning, I know Jake Browning has Jamar Chase, T Higgins, right. um, you know, it's still Jake Browning. Uh, so I feel like I should be higher on the Rams here. And I know my model does like them. I've bet the Rams each of the first two weeks. Uh, I have not done so yet. Probably will not get there, honestly. Uh, but the total under 43 and a half minus 110, I think that is a very fine way to go here. Now, obviously, with the Burrow ambiguity, you might just want to say, which would be fair, I'm I'm good. I'm holding off on on Bengals props. But when you look at those, Ryan, anything stand out to you right now? Yeah, I mean it. It becomes tough. It becomes tough when you don't have a you when you have this backup quarterback who you don't know that you can trust, and, and but still prolific weapons uh, on the other side. Where you're like, man, if he could just you know lead on these guys and go. We don't have any receiving props as they currently mm -hmm. uh, exist. For the Bengals, probably for that reason, uh, I would be interested to see what Jamar Chase's numbers were, especially his receptions prop, um, because I feel like you know the backup quarterback. You got to lean on some of these guys. I'm not sure we can you know rely on a, a or Smith or, or anybody like that. Uh, these ups are usually ones, but we know that T Higgins and Chase and and Smith and Boyd are going to be the the four culprits there. Um, for receiving work. So if we look at the touchdown scoring props here, uh, Jamar Chase, we're getting plus 115. And Jamar Chase has not scored a touchdown yet this season, Jim. This is in front of his home crowd. If you're going to put a bet on anybody here outside of Joe Mixon, uh, he's he's the one where I could just see him. You know, if we're talking about alpha receivers and trying to carry the team and just what, let me put the team on my back and do everything, then, you know, I, let's see if Jake Browning can, can get this guy the ball. And, you know, it's plus 115. You would like it just a tad bit higher there. I think people might look at T Higgins and say, oh, it's a little bit, a little bit better, better value for me to just go on T Higgins. But I just feel like Jamar Chase is really the guy that they have to unlock here in this game. Yeah, uh, as you mentioned, no receiving props yet up yet for the Bengals. Uh, the rushing props, Mixon is at 58 and a half. Um, rushing plus receiving Mixon is uh, actually not posted right now uh, for that one either, in part because they don't know what the passing output will be from Jake Browning. Now we've got the Rams side where Ryan, no questions about where the ball will go there. It's Tapuka Nakua, it's to Kyron Williams, other guys at least in the mix, like Tutu Atwell as well. But uh, any value for you on the Rams or as the market properly now priced in the absurd roles that Nakua and Williams have? It, it's it's properly priced in. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I mean, Ky Kyron, at pl you know, plus money on him to score a touchdown. Like usually we kind of see, you know, backs with the workload that that he's kind of getting and, and Mixon's role. I get it. The Cincinnati defense, you know, has pretty stout and does it's pretty you know uh, they hold form when they when teams get into the red zone as well too but Kyron has been able to make a uh, way I believe oh. he have like five touchdowns on the season and the touchdown he's getting game. absurd uh, red zone usage yeah it, it's just whole, like Ronnie Rivers or Zach Evans behind him uh to be able to to get things going um so and that's funny I was, I was like Zach Evans is that right Chris Evans is on the other side yes that's correct okay <laughs> so two Evans uh in backfield tonight but uh but yeah so I think th these are the two guys that we have to look at now when we look at receiver and props here from Puka at 66 and a half that feels reasonable and, and right mm -hmm. and i mean how do we not just slam on that number with the production that he's been doing but one of the interesting uh numbers that i have found and i think i'm gonna have to go to let me pull it up here jim i apologize if we look at game specials mm -hmm. uh ch -ch 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 -ch. i did see there is a number that exists out there and i think it's in game specials where puka to get uh 50 receiving yards or more in each half is okay. at plus 700. I want to say uh, if we if we scroll up a little bit there, Jim, I, I definitely will find exactly uh, where the market is. Oh, 40 sorry, plus. 40 receiving yards. 40 yeah. receiving yards. 
plus 40 receiving yards in each half, plus 700. He's done that in, in each game. And obviously, you know, you think about it, like he has to get close to that number to be able to put up 100 yards in both games receiving. But this is this is an area here where, I mean, Matthew Stafford is just, he's just known for peppering the guys yeah. who are his guy. And right now that is Puka playing into that Cooper Cup role. We saw the same thing when he was at Detroit and, you know, able to revive Marvin Jones' career. And we know what he did with Calvin Johnson. And, like, you know, I don't want to say that Puka is a Hall of Fame wide receiver yet, but he is the guy in this offense that everything is pretty much running to who's not Kyron Williams. So uh, that's an interesting one there where you can, you know, take advantage of, you know, kind of if you take his over number at 66 and a half, you know, you're getting minus one. 17 or 18, whatever that number is. If he hits on that and receiving yards come in both of these halves, uh, like we expect, you're getting seven to one odds on that. And I just yeah. feel like that's a great way to kind of take advantage of, of a number there that we're not uh, that we might feel good enough enough to bet on, but not really to returning dividends there. But this one gives us the chance to to reap home. Again, that's under the game specials tab in your FanDuel Sportsbook app. If you scroll down to seven to one, Puka Nakua, 40 plus receiving yards in each half. And the reason I think that's kind of interesting, Ryan, is because we talked last week about, uh, I believe it was George Pickens, where he's like this volatile guy where he's going to pick up his his yardage in chunks. But Nakua is like a consistent target earner who keeps getting reception after reception after reception, which makes him more steady from one half to the next. So I feel like this number actually fits his game pretty well, too where he just gets that consistent workload time after time after time. And I think that actually is pretty enticing here. So kind of keeping in mind the archetype of the player when deciding what the best market to bet a player is. Now, even though Nakua is like a steady guy, that does not mean upside markets are out of play for him. It just means we have to find different routes to upside markets. And I think that the 7-1 to one for 40-plus receiving yards in each half is a pretty enticing way to do so any other props or bets you like ryan across either of these two monday night games no uh, if we do get jake brown i need to jump on this before but i i will be interested in seeing if this front seven can can get to a guy like jake browning there we know that uh t- some type of woes and why Joe Burrows on the injury report, right? Is that uh, defenses have been able to get after him in, in some way, shape, or form, fashion? And so, looking at you know the Rams to get some sacks uh, against Jake Browning here, it would be something that I'm looking at similar in the game, uh, special for the Rams to get uh, five plus sacks is plus 600, right? Right before that, Puka Nakua uh, plus 700 bet there. So, that was another one that I thought was just interesting to get in on now, even if even if Burrow somehow decides to end up playing like we know he's not fully healthy um and you know just to be able to take advantage of that is an interesting one yeah five plus sacks six to one at FanDuel Sportsbook uh for the Rams in this game that's all we got here for this Monday night doubleheader uh Ryan want to thank you as always for joining us here today break down both of these games you'll be back with us once again tomorrow for our Tuesday show our Tuesday show this year talking some futures talking stock up stock down then I'll go through my thoughts on the opening lines for week number four Ryan I appreciate you as always good luck tonight have fun we'll talk to you once again tomorrow morning Sounds good, Jim. Thanks so much. Good luck, everybody. You can find Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Do not forget to subscribe to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts or find us on the FanDuel YouTube page or FanDuel TV+. Plus. Enjoy both of the games tonight. Good luck to you. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to set the table for week number four. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.